Okay. For anyone showing up on YouTube, assuming I actually post this later, I'm just sending uh, links around since I am a completely professional operation here uh, to let people know that I am streaming. Which, of course, I'm doing through my phone because that's the most efficient way to do this. I'm sure this will take no time at all. updates that I have no time to look at. And that's just one app. Who else do I need to spam? Oh, of course, the music group. Okay. All right. So I am set up here with Cakewalk. Um, pretty sure my resolution is terrible. Um, might need to turn the mic up a little bit, but I'll. Hopefully deal with that as I need to go. I meant to start this about half an hour ago, so already off to an excellent start. Um, so this is the quarterly two-hour album challenge, two-hour track challenge uh, run by uh, Ben Burns over on his Abstraction Discord. And anybody in the community makes a, uh, a song if they want to within the time frame of two hours when it's all done it's not a competition we have uh, we listen to the music and then it's all put together as an album that then um, sells on Bandcamp um, all the all the money from that goes to donate uh, is donated goes to um, an animal shelter and that's about all. Um, and I just need to fix one thing, I think. Because, let's see. Um, what month is it? It's July. Oh, 
Okay. And to make these things interesting, there's usually a, usually, there's always a theme. Uh, and the theme for this one is monstrous. Hey, thanks for stopping in. So, yeah, you are right here at the start of this. Um, I'm actually going to be making this song for the challenge um, to tie in a little bit with a project that I'm also going to be working on on my own. Um with some very kind of uh, like retro synthwave stuff. Um, so I already, I already preloaded some synths. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Prophet 5 synth, which just is, is delicious. This one that I'm not even that familiar with, but it's definitely from the 70s. Even though that sound is not 70s, um, I haven't even played with this one yet, so I really don't know what I'm getting into. <laughs> um, okay, that's better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on sound design with these, most likely. Um, just because I want to make the music. And uh, this baby, I actually thought was a little bit later, but it is a 70s synth, um, but got used in a lot of like 90s house tracks and stuff. Um, so really cool thing there. Um, so my concept for this is based on kind of an alternate history in Northwestern New Jersey surrounding a uh, dam project that was never done. Um, and I suspect there might be issues with the microphone so let me see if I can uh -huh. I like percentages there we go okay hopefully that's a little better um, I can probably just leave this up if I need to fix it again. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, I haven't exactly figured out a title, which... Is it putting the, uh, the horse before the cart to... Um, stick a title uh, before the song I don't know oh the chat window is supposed to be in here I tested that and it didn't work I guess um, even though it's set on it's set on the wrong thing ha there we go okay all right well gonna do its own thing there okay um so yeah a a site survey exploratory dig and i'm gonna leave most of it to the imagination because it'll be instrumental but something amiss with it um i think i'm gonna utilize the korg more along the lines of a bass line um <laughs> I like that sound, but it's a little too variable. I'm going to lose it. Um, let's see. Okay, well, so you know what? I said I'm not going to spend too much time on sound design, so immediately what do I do? Sound design. <laughs> it's being pressure sensitive and my hand is inconsistent he's a good key to work with I'm a rock musician in part <laughs> um, 
What tempo are we working with? That's just a hair too fast. That's where I want it. All right. Arm the track. And this will be completely basic. Okay. Do I really have to do this every time now? Just, where's my other window? Okay. And we're not lined up perfectly, but I want to keep it that way because it sounds more human. And if we're thinking in terms of, you know, kind of more retro synthwave type stuff, um, you're not going to have quantization. So um, if it's a little sloppy as long as it's within the neighborhood uh, then that's that's gonna be what we want here um, okay I'm gonna turn that off okay so let's do that again Let's just see. Yeah, what kind of string sounds do we have here? This might be just what I'm looking for. cool but not it that's cool also cool but not what I need okay out of tune that's a good candidate it's got another note in there Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, this is the one I want. Um, we got small again. Let's see. Let's speed up the attack a little bit. Um, what are we looking at here? Which is not E minor, because otherwise we major chord, and that's too bright. And helps if we put it on the right track. That's why I didn't hear the other track. Okay. That was a demo. All right. Okay, so getting very dissonant in there with the pedal.
that does need to come down. Uh, and I need to turn off snapping. Now I want snapping back on. All right. Everything there is lined up. Why are you doing this to me? Okay, so that's going to repeat again. And then from there. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So we'll do that twice. And this is a, a very typical <laughs> format for me to do to repeat stuff like this. Um... Okay. Well, when in doubt, listen to it. The, um, like, these are, are uh, emulated versions of 1970s uh, synthesizers. Um, and so, like, the Super Nintendo didn't um, exactly produce the same kinds of sounds, but a lot of those composers uh, sampled from instruments like these. Um, so... Yeah, it would definitely make sense that you're getting that it it would rem, uh, be reminiscent of some of the uh, Super Nintendo uh, sounds. Let's see. All right. Um, okay. to do that all again. But then we add in some kind of melodic line. And for that, we'll bring in the prophet. Is that the sound I want? Let's let's get super authentic.
I think I wrote that melody. I think that's from something. <laughs> I do like this sound though. That is super 70s. Um, yeah, let's run with it. Okay. So I'm alternating between, all right, you know what, I'm going to need more of this. Let's also be smart about this and insert a marker. And that's where the melody starts. might not go on for that long, but I'd rather have extra and delete it. Okay, disarm that track. This one is armed. Okay. have to say like I have to credit this instrument it's the mark of a good instrument is when you play the instrument and you find yourself inspired and every time I bust out this plug-in and like I haven't even had it that long but it, it just I want to keep playing with it and one of these days when I have lots of money, I will drop the thousands of dollars it takes <laughs> to get a profit. Well, if I have that kind of money eventually. Like, things I don't need that I really want to have eventually, a sequential profit. It's just, that is just such a delicious synthesizer. Um, this track probably needs to come up, which actually I'll just do that on the instrument itself. that are just a little bit too off for my liking. Although I will turn snapping off because I want some imprecision in this. <laughs>
let's hear it from here. is probably a little late or a little behind so then this note in order to feel in time has to be off the grid a little bit um, but yeah my I used the metronome to record the first of these tracks um, but then actually maybe it was on and I didn't notice I don't know <laughs> but it's not really been uh, where my ears are focused so um but yeah because i'm since i'm going for like a a 70s 80s retro sound on this yeah people used metronomes sometimes in the studio but you're working with analog tape uh to do that stuff so nothing's quantized um you know stuff isn't gonna be perfectly on the beat necessarily um and I'm embracing that here. Um, okay, let's let's take it from the start. going to have a sustained note.
No, do not bring that up. All right. There. <laughs> solved. Okay. All right. So I think it's going to make sense to go into another section. <laughs> Insert marker. It's for the B section. Of course, transitions are always a tricky thing for me. Um, all right, so it goes back to that. Um, so these will go away. that off. So about that one, so then how about this one? appropriate to this song. Um. Okay, that does give it that too funeral-like. I don't know. It's worth a try. to repeat itself. Okay, and then 
go on to a baseline. What baseline will go here? Hey, thanks. Actually, be too low, which is an unusual thing for me to say. Something like that. what I am having in mind with this a little bit, which also goes to the project that um, I I want to do, is like like shows that ran on PBS like back in the, the 80s that were either kind of they produced themselves using, you know, whatever old synthesizers they could get for cheap, or it was stuff that probably like the BBC made, and so they were able to license it for cheap. <laughs> But like I, I love those sounds. Um, um, so like that's the stuff I want to do right now. Let's see. I think I want something. A little more horn like. <laughs> I'm gonna call it horny. Um, DX7's too advanced. Um, let's see. Oh, shoot, which one is it? The, um, the Vangelis one. I think it's this. Yes, this is the Vangelis sounding one. And I can't read half of that because I'm using an old TV. Oh, hello there. Oh, just fell into almost exactly the sound I wanted. Sacks. That's definitely a name. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting sound. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, like this is the virtual instrument, uh, or virtual version of the instrument that uh, um, Vangelis used for a lot of the stuff in Blade Runner. Um <laughs> So I think this is a patch in particular styled after that, this uh, LA 2019. Um, this was the other one that I might want. Yeah, each of these presets um, has, like, you know, different, uh, yeah, pre-configured uh, settings for all the, the stuff on here. Um, and, like, I can also just set the stuff up myself. Um, but since I'm working with the... Um... Oh, I forgot about this thing. <laughs> Um, since I'm working in a two-hour time constraint, I'm not doing a whole lot of, um, like, patch design. I'm just taking a lot of the ready-made stuff. Um, so. And let's give this a color. This sounds purple to me. N not really, but I think it's time to have purple. And again, I want to give that a cycle to play through. But before I do that, I need to put more of this in. Um, most of these, uh, these synths I'm using, when they were new, um, didn't really have the the patch memory where you could call up the presets like this um so like with this one it has this selection here which are some individual sounds and you can combine like i think two at a time um like i think the top row with the bottom row is how it works um because having like that kind of memory was really advanced for the 70s um but the prophet um actually did have internal memory so it had a bunch of presets and you could save a few um this arpeggiator section is they repurposed this area from the original patch selector um, to give you an onboard arpeggiator that the original didn't have, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but yeah. So there are, there are some nice advantages to working with these virtual ones on the computer. Um, like, also, they don't fill up the entire room. Um, and it was like $400 to get 30 synthesizers, <laughs> as opposed to like a house. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I'm on the wrong instrument, that's why. Wait, something got weird. Maybe I was playing in the wrong key before. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Helps if I actually count too. Not 
turn both of those on. That's what it was. On my old computer, I had it set for two bars. Okay, it got in the wrong key somehow. Is it because of this? Did this mess it up? Did I transpose things without knowing it? It looks like I did. <laughs> okay, then. No. What am I looking at? Looking at the chord. Okay, yeah, no. So that's right. E, C, A, F sharp. And then if we switch over to this. Okay, that's not an E. All right. Let's do this. We'll get rid of it and then bring it back. And now it sounds like the right note. So something happened. It may have been when I was clicking that. So we'll just not touch it. start there. It's like almost the final countdown, that melody. <laughs> oh, copyright strike. <laughs> but, um, okay. <laughs>
synthesizer they used for that song might have been the same one um i mean it's a later song so probably a different synth but who made this one um i don't remember i don't think the cs necessarily indicates it was casio <laughs> um i think it might have been roland but I could be wrong. Um, okay. All right. All right, let's see how the whole thing's... <laughs> started off with the cello I may be a jazz player as well but there's just something about synthesizers oh, man um, so if I'm gonna go from there oh yeah dude like cakewalk is it's it's fully featured music production and it's free so like I don't know exactly how they make that happen like <laughs> i don't know if there's like you know some catch to it somewhere that i haven't figured out but um yeah like not everything that i'm using in here is part of cakewalk but um like it does have does come with um its own bass plugin uh drum plugin and a um expanded midi plugin electric piano uh and a string instrument and then there's also other stuff that's that you can also pick up for free um to have other virtual instruments um that i i can definitely point out along the way um like some pieces of the interface can be a little bit obtuse some of the ways it behaves are a little bit makes you go why but most of it like it, it does what i need um the place where my band records um the guy there uses cakewalk um that's how i found out about it so um and like this is what i'm using well half of what i'm using for uh making the game soundtrack i'm working on the other half of it i do most of the 
composing for that in Sibelius, actually, um, which is notation software. That one is not free, unfortunately. Um, but, because um, I do think a lot in terms of music notation, but um, Sibelius is limited in terms of the sounds you can get out of it, and you cannot record audio with it. So I do what I can there, export MIDI tracks, open them up in here, and then I really make it into like a finished product. Um, but yeah. Sometimes it's fun to just not write it and just play it. Let's see. So I think I want to have like just a little bit more here. to go there. Okay, yeah, so no, I just want to jump right up to the B there. Okay. section I have about an hour left to work on this so I'm feeling pretty good right now which has probably just jinxed the whole thing <laughs> um, that part sounded a little bit more triumphant which was not really the direction I wanted to go but that's the direction the song wanted to go so that's where it went um, For me, working on music, I'm very much of the, the kind of mindset and approach that you, you let the music do its thing. Um, if it's not going where you intended, um, trying to force it doesn't, doesn't work well. Um, and if you... So if you let it do its thing, then, okay, maybe you don't get what you wanted, but you get something that is, is more organic and kind of more inspired, and for me, it usually sounds better. Um, and worst case scenario is I didn't accomplish what I set out to, and I have a cool piece of music that I can save for later, and I just have to start over. <laughs> um, 
you know. So it's it's not that big a deal. I mean, like I've I had that happen with one of the songs I was working on for the soundtrack I'm doing, where I was working on it and it kind of went somewhere, and then we decided, yeah, it's not the right sound. Yeah, it happens. Um, but it was still a good song, <laughs> so save it for something else. Maybe it'll be DLC. Who knows? All right. That synth can take a break. I only have four tracks going. Um, I watched a video where someone was talking about doing, um, you know, an 80s style synth uh, song, and he was talking about the track limitations. Um, and one of the things that he didn't mention is the fact that you can also mix down. Um, you know, you do lose some quality in the process, but, like, let's say, you know, it's it's 1984, and your studio has just a very basic eight-track, um, you know, stereo, um, uh, you know, recording machine, um, but you need you know, nine or ten tracks in there. Well, you can, once you get to a point of saying, like, okay, these tracks are finalized, I'm not making any changes to them, I have them mixed the way I want to, you can then mix down those tracks into fewer tracks and then free some up. Um, but if you do that a lot, then things can get muddy and you start losing quality in other ways. But if you do it once or twice, you're probably okay. Um, so I think here I kind of want this song to fall apart um, and sound like creepier and stuff. So, um, I think I'm going to bring in another prophet. And let's see. Go with that. Um, I'll go back to the factory banks. some very famous sounds in it, um, or at least like commonly reused later. Like this has been on like every MIDI keyboard I had. I 
think I'm thinking of another one. I don't know. One of these synths has the um, uh, the sound from uh, moving in stereo by the cars. Um, it's apparently not in here. Or, oh, you know what? It might not be one of the factory sounds. Um... Okay, let's pop back in here. Well, that just keeps going. I'm not even touching anything now. Expand this search a little. Hmm. It'd be nice if they put them in like alphabetical order or something. Um, they gotta have stuff that says like sound effect, right? Maybe soundtrack. So those I've tried. Oh, yeah, I think this is the one. Yeah. All you need is that guitar to come in. I forget how all the words go. We're moving in stereo. <laughs> supposed to mean yeah we're gonna use the moving in stereo sound and I'm gonna turn the metronome off because I don't even need time at this point we don't need time where we're going.
Okay. It'll need more than that. But that's definitely something. That's a good enough idea for now. Okay. Um, could I do something with this? Alright, so if I just play... Okay, now those things are being weird. It was still reading the value of the, the mod wheel as being up, so I turned it down. I had to record that in. That's one of the weird things where I don't always know what like values the software is remembering and not remembering. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna have other sound effects, I guess. Um. All right, I think I'm gonna try this guy. Um.
God, no. <laughs> that was unpleasant. You should just call it screaming. Sounds like something roaring. But it could be who knows what.
freaking volume envelope. thing that I didn't like. There. So, it seems that these notes are uh, the type of sound you get out of this is velocity sensitive, so if you hit it with a hard enough velocity, it roars. And if you don't, it just kind of plays a... It's a little better. Okay. Now the question is, do I go back to more music music after that, or is that where it ends? The ending 
section was kind of more literal than <laughs> I figured on with, with the idea of this, um, the, the theme for this challenge being monstrous. Um, oh man, I, I kind of want to add more, but like it fades out so nicely there. I almost feel like trying to put in something else is just not going to work. Like, where do I go from there? Like, I think that might be it. Huh. Like, the only other thing that comes to mind is, like, trying to make something that sounds like a frantic escape, but I'm just not feeling that. And I kind of also like the ambiguity of something was found, something was there what happened after that that's make up your own ending to this story you know and i mean i have a little bit of a story in mind but you know i think like i haven't even decided where you know like exactly what happens after that in the story but you know It's, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that's finished. Um, and I actually have time to spare. Well, I say time to spare. I mean, I can do a little bit of mixing. It has to get mastered and exported. But those, those don't always necessarily have to fall into the two hours. Um, I can't talk about the uh, game soundtrack I'm working on, but I can talk about my personal project that I haven't started, which um, I think this will also fit into, um, even though that's not the purpose of this right now. Um, I plan to make an album that uh, initially the idea was it's just going to sound like the music will sound like um, stuff basically from like... 1980s public TV um, you know I I don't remember a whole lot of the 80s but I remember enough of it <laughs> and like the stuff that I saw on public TV when I was a kid um, you know PBS shows and stuff and then I got to thinking about like well is can I put it into some kind of a context aside from just that sound and I got the idea of kind of this alternate history uh, related to a mostly abandoned um, township, not that far from where I live in New Jersey, um, but kind of renaming it as an entire county. Um, so it's a fictitious county for these purposes, uh, but named after this township. Um, and, uh, like, there was, uh, it's along the Delaware River. Um, back in, I think it was the 50s, or maybe it was the 40s, there was a, a flood. Um, a few lives were lost. Um, it did damage to, like, the, the river bed itself. Um, and so there was, there were plans made to make a dam, um, to control flooding and also for hydroelectric power and subsequent to that to be able to do this they said well you know if we build a dam it's gonna create an artificial lake where people are currently living so um we're going to buy up these properties for this you know major public works project and so a lot of people were displaced because of that um but as time went by, they realized that 
there wasn't as much of a flooding problem as they had previously thought. Um, public opposition to the project grew. Um, and uh, also some conservation uh, efforts went into place. So um, I think it was sometime in the 1970s um, that they finally said, all right, you know what, we're going to cancel. Or they, I think they put it on hold, but essentially the, they canceled the project to build this dam um, across the Delaware River. And um, so a few people still um, had still kept their homes um, and there's still a small population uh, remaining in this township but I thought about okay well what if that project had uh, you know progressed more and I still haven't decided like okay maybe they built the dam or you know maybe they didn't but more things happened and it brought more attention to the area so they have a public tv station in in this fictitious county that i'm making in the same place um and that's the context for it and then this uh you know the album challenge thing came up and it, it fit in nicely with that so um the only thing I've decided is that this song takes place in 1962 and it has to deal with, like, some kind of site survey and exploratory dig. Um, that's that's basically it. So, and they, they find something underground. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the album itself isn't going to all be creepy stuff. Um but I think that'll be an interesting thread to weave into it. Um, let's see. A couple of things that I can do. I need to go into the master channel and... Well, I guess that needs to be on anyway. Um, one of my favorite tricks with everything is the tape emulator. Um, and given that this is going for a retro sound, we're going to switch it to low speed tape. I'm going to turn up the noise level some. And yeah, these I just kind of play with. <laughs>
just check that. So that would cut it off. Um, yeah, let's just go here. All right. All right, so now I have my endpoint. a bug on the wall and now there's a smudge on the wall problem solved okay all right um Don't need any of these. Okay, I think. Did I install that yet? So I also need to put on just a final bit of processing. And I may not have installed it yet. Or I have the wrong name. That's okay, I can do that later. Mastering. Could be in there. Um, all right, well, I can worry about that later. Let's see. Okay, well, I can do some more detailed mixing with this. For little tweaks, because I have the time. change some of these then it'll be less obvious that I've just copy pasted okay let's go back
help with that part. Um, so I think, do you want to actually mess with some? zeroed out. Okay. If I 
open you up. That doesn't actually go that high until the end. with that. Yes, that's what I wanted to see. If I can lower those values globally. the um, the kind of the warble that I introduced <laughs> on those notes it was coming in just a little bit early on some of them and I felt like it was getting a little too extreme and I was able to just select everything and decrease it a little bit um, so that that definitely helps there um Yeah, and otherwise, I don't really want to mess with this much more because that could just get. Uh, there's a point when it's doing too much. If this was something like I wasn't doing for this challenge, probably my approach at this point would be to just let it sit for a few hours or probably overnight and then come back to it. Um, you know, and see what else I want to do. But part of, the, part of the point of this challenge is to just go through quickly and get something done. Um, so, you know, making quick decisions, just saying, okay, you know what, if this works, I'm going to run with it. Um, rather than kind of I mean, everybody's process is going to be a little bit different, but I know for me there's, like, I do a lot of kind of, like, A-B testing, saying, like, okay, let me try this, let me try this, I'll try this, which one did I like the sound of more, um, I'll kind of, you know, I'll change configurations of things, um, and then I'll get to a point where I go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this, uh, I have something I like, and then I'll put it aside for a little bit, um, you know, a few hours or a day, 
and then listen to it again when my ears are fresh and sometimes i'll notice something then i'll go like oh wow this thing needs to change here or other times i'll listen to it and go like oh wow yeah this is done um but uh like for this situation um yeah this is this is pretty well done um And I can see over on the Discord. Anyone else is doing anything right now? Well, I didn't see any stream announcements, nor do I see anyone scheduled. Not that I know how to raid streams anyway. <laughs> because I barely use Twitch. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, thanks for hanging out on here. Um, this was a lot of fun to do. Um, real quick, I'll pop open um, just a, another project as an empty one. Um just since I have some time left and I like doing this kind of thing. Um, it's like the synthesizers I used on this are from the um, Arturia collection. And it was like, I managed to get it on sale for $400. Um, and like, that was basically half business expense, half birthday present to myself. But there is definitely um, other stuff out there for free. Um, one of which I've used a lot and can recommend, um, which is this thing, uh, the Tal Uno 62, which is based on the Roland Juno 60 synthesizer. Um, and I don't see this going out of my, uh, setup either. Um, oh, I wonder if I'm active on both. That would be... Okay, no. It's just... The, the software is smart enough. It just takes a couple seconds to switch over. So, this is like a delightfully simple synthesizer that you can do a lot of stuff with. Um... And, um, like, it does come up with, um, several different patches in it, some of which I think I've wound up modifying from the original. I'm not 100% sure, um, how much they've changed. Then there's a few in here that are my own creation, um, but, uh, Yeah, yeah, the Arturia V collection. I think it's nine is the current one. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this one. Um, I think it's also a decent way to kind of learn um, 
like how a lot of the synthesizers work because there's not a whole lot of stuff going on here. Um, I don't know if there's much in the way of tutorials with it, but like, like okay, yeah, there's knobs and dials and levers, but it's not um, like it doesn't go uh, too overboard, you know, with the settings. <laughs> That one's loud. Um. Now it's not so loud. Um, but yeah, it has uh, three oscillators, uh, which are the tone generators, plus a noise. So if I turn the oscillators off, you just hear the noise. Um, although it's being modulated by some other stuff. Um, and like, it doesn't have all the crazy stuff with oscillators being like linked in different ways and cross modulated and whatever. Um, you know, they just, they're together. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of linked internally. is a, a, a bass synth, this sound. And is that... I think that's... Comp uh, oh, no. I think I modified an existing one to get that. That has a chorus mode. get these nice thick sounds out of here um but yeah this thing's free uh from uh, the company tau i think it's togu audio line um and they have other uh like effects plugins and stuff um that are pretty good um and Oh yeah, um, and that's another loud one, okay. This is another one of theirs, it's intended mostly as a bass synth, I think it's based on the, uh, the Roland 303. Does it change color? Because that'd be cool. No. Um, let's see. Um, I haven't used this one as much. Um, but again, you know, like not super complex to use. Um, and this one, whatever it is, another synth of some kind, which sounds by default like the other one. This one has a lot of stuff in it. I haven't used this as much either. So, you know, you can get synth drums in there. Um, 
Let's see. It's also worth mentioning... Um, if I can remember where it is. Or what it's called. It shouldn't be a synth, but it might be mistakenly in there. Um, yeah, like this shouldn't be here. Piano. Uh, that was not a free one, though. Um, why am I not seeing it? Um, there it is. Yeah. This is not a synth. BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um... So this, I eventually, so this is from Spitfire Audio, um, and let's see. Where is, where is the thing to change it? It's right in front of my face. Okay. So that was that was like their their second tier version. Um called Core. This one called Discover. Um it's it's pretty high quality samples of different um you know orchestral instruments you also have I do think you have to pay for this one normally but sometimes they'll have thing like special promotions where you can get it free I got this for free um, and like because I liked it enough when they're uh, they're like the mid-tier version core went on sale I picked it up because um, that has way more options in it and you can also for a lot of the instruments, you have more uh, more control over the how they sound, um, and more um, uh, you know play styles available. Um, Um, like, like the core version, this wasn't cheap, but, um, for me it was worth it since I'm, like, doing this stuff. Um, and they did credit me the cost of the, um, the Discover version, even though I got it free out of a promotion, which was cool. Um, so, like, I think it was, like, less than half price that I paid but um yeah so there's there's definitely like free plugins and stuff out there and um well you all know me anyway so you can you know how to get in touch with me um but yeah that's uh that was uh the song and um do not need to save project two um that's about it and um all the all the stuff goes up um the uh like the challenge ends tomorrow evening and then all the stuff goes up i think a few days later and so once that happens i'll 
have uh, my song up eventually because <laughs> I take forever with that. Um, but uh, yeah, so hopefully you had a good time and I'll do more of these eventually. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it for the stream. Um, I'll play it again. Um, but yeah, so thanks for hanging out and have a good night. Thanks again for hanging out. Have a good night.